Hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, pop-up, the Alex Bennett pop-up. This is just our fun little, we do it because we love doing it show. <laughs> this, it's terrific, actually. Um, and uh, we are, uh, we're waiting, we've got a lot of people waiting to go on. It, it, the thing about this show that's very nice is it's like this a little bit. A little bit. Ah, there we go. There. Uh, we, we like doing this because uh, everybody on this show is so civil and so nice. And uh, I just hope uh, anybody that calls, calls in that spirit. Okay. And they're just all people who like to talk to each other. Uh, let's, let's look here. Here they come. Oh, God. Here. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. There's Jeffrey Stein and Mike Chisholm's here. Hello, Rick. How are you, Rick Checkman? Steve Edward Berger with the car. That's right. F, the cartoon mm. voice. Mm. <laughs> uh, say, I'm hunting rascally rabbits. <laughs> I'm hunting rascally rabbits. Okay. Either that, or you could be the voice for play. You could have been the Affleck duck. Ah, uh, that's right. We did, we tried that a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Wallace, hello there. Uh, uh, Andrew Deutsch, a big hello to you and Len Frisco. And let me add some more people here. Oh, look who's here today. Yes, it's Scott Boddicker who, and Mandy. Hello, Mandy. <laughs> Anybody in the office with you? Hi. Good. Mandy, can you hear me? Is there any, are you there, Ma Mandy? Can you hear me? You can hear me. Is there anybody in the office with you? Just pretend like just talk to your father and if you show him a picture of me, he'll probably agree, you know. And Scott Boniker. Hello, Scott. Hey, no hey, Alex. Texas. Hey, guys. Wow. Oh boy, we're really got a bunch here. Nice crowd that's here. You know what I did today? No. They gripe me. Just another thing. You know, when you're old. Everything right. Do you find Shecky the things are griping you more and more as you get older? Yeah, but I lived through it. Yeah, yeah. You 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 muster through it. Okay. Um uh, uh you know hey. are, you, are you still able to put up with me? Is that possible, Shecky? Maybe are good looking. He has to think about it. Hey. <laughs> he lives through it. Well, ask Marjorie, 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 can you put I up with me? I suppose since you come out and visit, so, you know, it's not that hard. What? Oops. <laughs> Albert, Albert, my friend Albert, producer, sent me a note the other day that he and his wife want to come up and stay for a week in June. And they've, they've, getting, they've got their shots and everything, so that's fine. And uh, so he wrote, can we do it? Marjorie writes, of course, you're more than welcome. So I write him, oh no, not again. <laughs> the one advantage of the pandemic was you didn't come. <laughs> but what is there what is there for them to do coming to Manhattan? Um, they see their friends, which is perfect because like, we don't have to entertain yeah, them. We don't have to entertain them. They go out, they They'll do take us out for dinner. And then they take us out for dinner one night. Yeah. Right. And then they're off to do their own thing. Yeah. Which is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's terrific. Uh hello there, uh uh, uh, uh Schmoody, Kathleen. How are you? She's I'm very home. well. Yeah, she's at home in Guala. Mm. Anybody from California here? Let's see here. Yes, we've got uh, uh yeah, Frisco is here. Uh and he's from California. And uh I guess that's it. Uh, do you do you know where Gualala is? You no, know, I looked it up the last time she had mentioned it, so yes, yeah. now I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks beautiful. It, yeah. it, 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 well, she the other night on the show, or the other was it the other night that you opened up the window because it was still light outside? Yeah, and you could see the ocean. Yeah. You know, nice. it's across the highway, but you could see the ocean, and it's it's oh. it's lovely. Yeah. Um, you know, California is lovely. I think. I don't know. I haven't been there in, in how long has it been since I've been there, Marjorie? I think it's since we got married, right? I haven't been back to San Francisco. We got married there. Yeah, that, that probably was the last time. Come, we, got come back. Lake, we got married at Lake Tahoe. Come back. You can stay here, Alex. It's fine. Don't worry. I, I bought my flowers <laughs> at the Safeway. 
What? I bought my flowers at the at the supermarket. Yeah, Safeway. <laughs> that was really good. Oh, here comes uh, here comes uh, Steve Trucker Steve. I think it is. Is it Trucker Steve? There he is yeah. in his truck. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Wow. Where's he at today? Gee, two more, and we'll have like sixteen people, which is more than yeah. we've ever had. Here. Anyway, so um, um, no, what? So I was going to say, what gripe me today is the the remote control for our fans. We have four fans in this house. Um, four. Four. I forgot the two in the kitchen. No, no, that's another another unit. They, well, they won't work there. But the four fans we put in are here on this. And it, it, when we got them 10 years ago, right? We got the remote control. Oh, and we, put we moved the in. Remote control part. We got the remote control with it. Okay. So now it's 10 years later. And I go and the one in the bedroom because Marjorie breaks everything. Of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, starts going bad on us. So I go online, go to Amazon. How much? And I look and I put in the number of this unit and it's hundred and thirty five dollars wow. so i go to hunter to see what it costs now and they don't they be discontinued them of course now why would you discontinue a remote control that is in thousands hundreds maybe hundreds of thousands of fans across the country it's a very common one uh, why would you do away with this particular remote uh, when there are still people out there using these fans. And by the way, these fans never go bad. The the uh, hundred years forever. from now, you could come back and these fans would probably still be working, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. Is it a case of planned obsolescence? Yeah. I don't know. Probably. So I, I finally went on eBay and for $65 bought a used one. You know. Uh, but I mean, come on. I bought I bought four of your goddamn fans. I don't know how much these fans cost, and and, and you know we and then we get the we get the units to put in there to to make them remote control. Uh, the least you can do is just, you know how what's what's the big deal about keeping this in stock? People aren't ordering them anymore. You know they break. Probably easily. all Bluetooth now. Huh? It's yeah. probably Bluetooth. You probably say, Alexa, turn on my fan. Probably. No, there's no Bluetooth. Thanks, Len. You just turned on my fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, we don't say Alexa around here. You say E C H O. Thank God you can't uh. spell. Um, <laughs> because my name is Alex. Right. He like yelled out, Alex, <laughs> the time is good answer blah. on everything. And my, <laughs> my youngest daughter is Alyssa, and the shit turns on all, all the time. Yeah, well, just you can change it so you do it to the word echo, or you can actually a couple of other words you can use. That's my son's name. The computer. <laughs> <laughs> but every everything in my life is breaking. You know, so I, 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 I'm getting to the point where I may not do the, the weekday show much longer because the equipment is just, it, it's just too many. It's not the equipment's bad. It's the technology is bad. The software is bad. Something crashes my machine now. Mm. Uh, every day. No, not every day. Once a week, maybe. Well, yeah, once a week. But the, it's always right it's before. Do. It's always right before I'm going to do a show. <laughs> and, and, and it's a big, a very expensive, very powerful Mac. But down here on this show, I use a cheap old Dell, and it's working great. You know, it's working <laughs> terrific. So let me make sure we're so our job security is uh, is not in jeopardy right now. <laughs> your, your job security is not in in jeopardy. Hey, have you gotten your residual checks yet, everybody? Because I haven't gotten them. <laughs> it's well, in the mail. This, this, show does not, this show does not earn money, I don't think. Maybe it does. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so um, uh, anybody watch that tragedy last night on television? Only uh, you, Alex. Only you. Worst movie in the of the year won the award. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, forget about the qual the quality of the awards themselves, um, like. Uh, I everybody expected Chadwick Boseman to win. Yeah. Now, granted, I agree he didn't deserve to win. 
he hasn't that wasn't that good a movie well the whole show was a setup for him to win and then roll credits and yeah. i wanted to be in that control room when he lost as people <laughs> were and they didn't know stuff. what to do well here's they part of what, what they did do. here's part of what they did last night they moved best picture to to two point to the, in the middle from the end before the actors yeah. because they wanted yeah. this touching and tearing ending to their little because Chadwick Boseman would be yeah and he was uh, crying and the tearing and the wife getting up right, and saying right, thank right, you so right. much for making him and so on <laughs> and then then uh what's his name wins uh Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins. Sir Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins. And they show a picture of him because he didn't show up. <laughs> and that's the end, that's the end of the show. They had the disc jockey who was running the music for the show say goodbye, everybody. What is that? <laughs> also, you had the most uncharismatic actor in the world introducing that segment, Joaquin yeah. Phoenix, because he won the previous but, year. Yeah, yeah. So he's just like, Hey, or Anthony Hopkins couldn't be here. Goodbye. This must all be this all must Goodbye. Be, this all must be Steven Soderbergh's doing because he probably figured, oh, you know, we'll have this big Chadwick Boseman ending. Oh no, that was the whole idea. He was making a movie. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he and, shot you know, it in 24p for some unknown and reason. Made it widescreen. They did it widescreen. They they cropped the top and they cropped the bottom so it would look more widescreen. Like a movie. It's, at least, at least there was a very slow, lovely tribute to the dead. Well, you know, he said he, he said, oh my God! Even Soderbergh said he wanted to make a movie, and he made a movie like he usually does. Boy, and he didn't get the right ending. Right. And he didn't get the right ending. He get the, didn't get the ending. He, he I like what uh, I like what Elton John said. He said it looked like it was held at a Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say that? Yes. The ratings got, ratings were down sixty percent from last year. Last year they got twenty three million, which was the lowest ratings ever for an Oscar. Okay, this year it was nine million. Nine oh million. my god, <laughs> nine not, million! And it's not like people had places no. to go, right? <laughs> yes. Mike. Well, my wife and I, when we were watching it, one of the things that we kept saying though was like. We hardly saw any new movies this year. Like this would have been the year to throw something up there and, and the random movie could win because it was such a uh, it did. It was such a year for box <laughs> to get out the movie. So I don't know. Like I think part of that could have been that nobody was engaged in it because nobody's seen any movies compared yeah. to other years. Well, right. also, as long as nobody saw the movies, why weren't they showing clips from those <laughs> movies? <laughs> They and were well, I run during, all were during when they spend did do the minutes. minutes of Wait, one at a time. What? What did you say? Rick? No, I said why? Why did it still run three hours and fifteen minutes? Right. When it moved all the best songs, it was well, thirty minutes. Because there was a whole segment there called "Name That Tune." Did you see yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, that was the worst this setup. Is the to thing where they had a player. friend of the disc jockeys go to people in the audience and then say. Okay, we're going to play a song. We're going to play this game. We're going to play a song, and you tell us whether it wasn't nominated, was nominated, or won. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. he went to three different people, and it was just, I'm going, what is it? <laughs> you know, why? Why are that they doing a, this? <laughs> that was bad writing, to say the least. It was just a setup to get Glenn Close to talk about uh, a, a Spike Lee movies and and get her to to shake her butt like that's all they were trying to do with that whole section yeah it was just, it it so long to get there and uh you know it's just that overall it just it it all the you know the oscars have a certain dignity and majesty oh they haven't had that in years Alex. well no but they do because number one they're in a theater and everybody's seated in their tuxedos you know but I mean, this looked like you were going to a really bad cocktail party that you wanted to say, isn't it getting late? You know? <laughs> I got a train to catch. Yeah. <laughs> I check I check every year, Alex, and still they don't have me in that in memoriam part. I'm I'm kind well, of now, that's the other thing. That's the other thing. I showed it to Marjorie. They ran the in memoriam last night. To begin with, they ran some uh, Stevie Wonder song, which hey. didn't 
didn't fit the mood. And then on top of that, they went so fast with each of them. It was like, let's get this over with fast because no, who likes the movie? Let's get back to the party. Actually, that's my favorite part of the Oscars. Yeah. yeah. You know. Uh, See who uh, you outlived? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look at it and you go, oh, yeah, Ennio Marconi died this year. Yeah. I forgot about that, you know, and oh, so and so died. And then, of course, there's always the running bet that Shecky and I have as to who's going to be the last person in the in memoriam. Who was it? Because I wasn't watching. What? It was I think it was both. Chadwick, I it was and, and they were going by fast with each of these pictures when they got to Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. No, no, when they got to what's his name right before Harrison they Ford. Oh. They started slowing it down. Anthony Hopkins. Harrison. Now, if if there are two important Anthony, actors, please. and one's the most important of the two actors. Is it Chadwick Boseman or is it Sean Connery? Yeah. Sean Connery. Yeah. No question. Yeah. Yeah. He should have been the last there. Yeah. Right. No, they had to do Chadwick Boseman. Otherwise, uh, who knows? You know, for, uh, cancel culture. That guy Crump, the lawyer, will show up in school. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> do, you th do you think this is why they could probably never have a comedian host again? Because what can you say that? On an Oscar show that you won't get canceled for or get in trouble. Yeah, exactly. They had no comedian. There was nothing funny they showed. There's nothing you. funny at all. You know what it lacked? It really and Bad. This, I noticed this when I read something. Somebody said it, and I said yes. There was <laughs> no sense of humor there. Right. You know, there's always they're something. afraid. Yeah, yeah they're afraid. There's, exactly. there's, there's always something funny you can do. You know. Uh, and, and what can I say about an Oscars where the best speech of the night was the one that Tyler Perry gave? Yes. It which, was awesome. Which was awesome. Yeah. And I've never been a big fan. I don't like, you know, drag queens. Uh, but uh, I, uh, uh, he was, he was tremendous. Yes. Because it was a very inclusive kind of plea to people. And, I, and did the audience really stop clapping when he mentioned the uh, police? The police? They said that, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, when he started giving a speech, people were clapping, and then he mentioned the police, and it all we came to it. We should admire everybody. We should be... So Not hate everybody. everybody. Yeah, know. meet yeah. us in the middle. It does, does, meet us in the middle. Don't yeah. don't mind, you know, don't go after people just because of their race or because Absolutely. of their religion or their sexual orientation or if they're police, he said. Yeah. And everybody mm -hmm. kind of stopped clapping. They were all clapping on each of the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, he was the only decent part of the evening. That and the old Korean woman who won for Best Supporting <laughs> Actress, who I thought was terrific. But, and they didn't tell them, hey, you only have a minute to give your acceptance speech. Mm -hmm. Now go up there and just some of those people bored us for what? I, four minutes, five minutes, one point. Well, what about the one? Went to the bathroom, took a dump, and the guy was still <laughs> talking. <laughs> what about the woman who was howling? <laughs> oh, you mean uh, Frances McCormick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> see that? you didn't see that, Marjorie, but when she went up because Told of the best what, picture, I think. Yeah, he did a big. He's been, she's been given zero fucks for years. I love her. Huh? I said she's been given zero fucks for years. I love her. Mm. Yeah, well, I I I, I, I like her. But, well, she has an I don't. She gave the best acceptance speech because it was only like fifteen seconds. Anyway, she right. was out of there. Uh, uh, she knew the value of brevity. Yeah, I think I think one of the people who won for short something right. The speech mm. was longer than their movie. Well, the, <laughs> here's, here's the reason for that. You win for best short subject. It's the only time probably in your life you're going to win an Oscar. Yeah. So you're going to make the best out of it. You know, you're going to give the acceptance speech that everyone will remember because you may not get another chance of doing this. Right? It will she, never happen again. Yeah. She so, was, she so, was so good in her movie. Short subjects and people who are lesser than make longer speeches, speeches than anybody else. But in this case, they put no limit on how long a speech could go. Oh, God. And it was, and there was no orchestra <laughs> to play them all. So they, you know, they couldn't start playing them off. They go, oh, I got to rush. I got to go, you know. Oh, it's horrible. Just horrible. Nobody had the good old David Chappelle wrap it up contraption. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. It, it was uh, humorless. 
and it was uneventful. I mean, and no clips. I mean, when all the movies, five of the movies that won, the won awards last night were on Netflix. Netflix was the number one studio in getting awards. Yeah, but they got the minor awards. Well, no, they got the, uh, Hulu. Hulu got uh, ma the major award because Nomad. Well, I'm saying Netflix Hulu. got the minor awards. Yeah. But what I'm saying No Man Land was Hulu, Alex? Yep. Yeah. You don't have to go to a movie theater anymore to see the best picture. Ma Rainey right. is uh, what? Is that what, which? HBO, HBO, I think. HBO, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it here, so, yeah. So, I mean, it, most of those movies you could have seen. I mean, Shecky and I always, every year, you say, have you gotten the screeners yet? You know? Do you think it's going to be an uphill battle getting people back into a theater? No, they're the going prices? back already. Well, no, I think to watch I, that crap, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't gone in on two years. years. Maybe the I new James no Bond film is the only place either. you can see it. Yeah. Kong versus Godzilla, whatever it's called. Yeah. But do you, but, yeah don't you, okay. you think that you think the genie is out of the bottle now that it's so easy to just get, you know, the you content on your TV? Are people going to spend, spend <laughs> 20 30 dollars to go see this shit? And you could buy it, let's say, for eighteen, twenty dollars. You, your whole family can see it. Or you, or you wait three months or whatever, and it's going to be on there anyway. <laughs> and then they're selling it to million, billions of people around the world. Right. Well, I mean, you know, Rick, the movie theater may still be good for what we call tent pole. Yeah. Features, you know, big yeah. features. Yeah. Um, uh, it, probably could get pretty good business out of the new James Bond film, but then again, you know. But who in the future is going to pay the money to make mm. a film like that? Yeah, but Rick, right. they had to make a sequel to the Godzilla and King Kong because there, all, there were so many important questions left unanswered by the last ones. <laughs> 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 well, that's why I, didn't watch, the next one. why I didn't watch it is because I didn't see the prequels, you know, so. <laughs> hey, well. Uh, but, um, you know, I mean, I just, it's, it's, uh, I think there's no reason to go back to theaters that much anymore. Not for uh, that kind of money. I mean, it's, really, <laughs> you take somebody out to a dinner and a movie and it costs you $200. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you go to, out to a dinner and then the movie, 200 bucks. Easy. Easy. Plus the taxis. Right. Yeah. You guys have Plus yeah, the yeah. taxis. And it's more expensive if you go with Marjorie because she has to have two Pinot Grigios. <laughs> yeah. and your point is oh by the way i was doing a, 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 a i do crossword puzzles while i'm on the can okay and 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 it came up pinot grigio in the really in the software because what was the question puzzle. so thank you very much for being an alcoholic <laughs> <laughs> anytime <laughs> um yeah but i mean i just felt i felt the whole uh, by the way, we lost. Uh, uh, What's his name? What's Mandy. Mandy and Trucker. Mandy. Huh? Oh, it's Sandy. It's Mandy. 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 <laughs> Mandy. Mandy. Uh, yeah, I think she has problems in her office because yeah. yeah. yes, her office. Somebody room. complained. A nearby worker complained. Yeah. And she has earbuds, and she doesn't have the sound on. Yeah. And doesn't she get on the telephone once in a while to talk to a client? Yeah. yeah. Well, just say you're talking to your father and show me. <laughs> I'll believe it. You know, uh, Dad's not been well lately, and I. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Alex is sick, so we have to be on the show. No, I'll tell you. I think I, I saw Nomadland, and we didn't. But did we like it. I can't remember. This is what I feel. She was fantastic, no question about. It. Why? Because she looks grizzled the, but and the old. The movie was so depressing. Yeah, it was the, very, very depressing. But she deserved the Oscar. She was very, very good in that. Yeah, yeah I think the working know, title you. was "It's a Cure for Happiness." Was the name of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, someone better to win as Best Actress would be Carrie Mulligan. I thought. She oh was my God! Yes. In promising young. Girl. We're gonna watch that again, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody, anybody seen it? It, it, if when you watch yeah, yeah. it, just stick with it because you really don't know where it's going till the very end, and that's what's so let it go. Out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was I didn't want to see it after twenty minutes. And of course, don't blink. Don't blink. Don't, don't blink. blink. What do you mean, don't blink? Doctor Who. Oh, Doctor Who. Oh, don't blink. Of course, Carrie Mulligan was in that episode of Doctor Who. 
Yeah. That's where she, she got her big start. Good. Yeah. She was so good in this movie. She was so good in Doctor Who. She Which film are you referring to, Alex? Great. She, great in Doctor uh, Who. Uh, um, promising no Young Woman. No Man's Land. Huh. Yeah. Promising Young Woman. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Mike. The one I was disappointed in, and now, now, granted, I haven't seen the movie that the the uh, Korean gal uh, was in. So, but that being said, I thought the gal who was in Borat, I thought she deserved it. Like her, her role, her performance in Borat was so good. That was my big disappointment of the evening. I wanted her to win so badly. It wasn't she was quite good in that film? Who won? Well, well who won what? Supporting actress. The supporting actress. The old Asian woman. Oh, the old, uh, yeah, the old Asian woman. I stopped watching it the twenty. Well, I'm glad she won because the acceptance speech was great. You know, uh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, she spoke Korean, so she wasn't going to talk very long. Okay, you know, in her broken English, but it, it, you know, she was she was fine. But I mean, it's just and they're so all, trying to be so all inclusive in this thing. Oh, look at us, you know. The only thing is that where, and Charlie, tell me if I'm wrong, where the racism exists is in the fact that they aren't inclusive. Just because you put a bunch of blacks in something doesn't mean you're being inclusive. Where are the Asians and where are the, and the Mexicans? Hispanics. Hispanics. And where Filipinos. Filipinos. Samoans. You know. Oh, well, we thought, we, we oh. forgot about them. We just went out and got a bunch of blacks as, <laughs> as dressing here. To it's show so them that we're not racist. Well, you're racist because that's why you've got them there. <laughs> you know? you're, you're saying, oh, he's black. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. You know? <laughs> oh, you're Filipino. We haven't got room. You know, I mean, it, it's just it, it was just a lot of we're going to be really inclusive this year. Well, just make sure you get more black people voting for these pictures. And uh, it makes sure you also get more Filipinos and uh, Mexicans and people like that, you know. But then the white folks won the big awards. <laughs> you, you know, you're yeah. right. When all push came to shove, they thought, that, you're right, Chad, they thought Chadwick Boseman was going to be the big ending. And it all set up. The ending. They probably had a hologram ready. Oh, they had a hologram. <laughs> it, it turns out he's not really dead and he was going to show up last night. <laughs> They had fireworks and confetti ready to get rain down on the station. <laughs> and everybody no goes crazy it. because Chadwick Boseman won. What did he win for? He won for dying. I mean, he's been better in other stuff. I don't know if you ever saw him in the thing about the, the Supreme Court justice. Uh, um, Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall. Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. Yeah. He was very where, good. Where he played Thurgood Marshall. It was terrific. He was one. He didn't get nominated for that because he was alive. That's right. He didn't, he, you know, Black Panther. Well, you know, you, you don't necessarily want to vote for a superhero. But Ma Rainey, he was okay, but he wasn't terrific. But he was dead. You know, I'll never forget watching the uh, Oscars with you and Michael mm, Snyder, Snyder yeah. and every man that came out with their wife. You and Michael are yelling, "Beard!" Beard. Beard. <laughs> Beard. And I'm just looking at you two going, what the hell? Another person comes out, oh, they're okay. Beard. <laughs> Every wife, except I think for five, was a beard. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't, I don't think we said that for Tom Hanks, did we? No. No. <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, yeah, the night of a thousand beards. Uh, it's too political now. <laughs> Well, it's, it's uh, everything's political. Everybody's afraid, you know. Yeah. I talk to comics. They're most of them are glad for COVID because they don't have to play a club and get booed because something they say might be offensive to one person's mm -hmm. audience. You know, uh, we don't need that kind of offensiveness anymore. But uh, anyway, so um, but but you know, so it, it was it was uh, it was not uh, not great, you know, and. Uh, Gee, I wonder if there were any movies that weren't nominated. Uh, so, but uh, five, uh, I think the number one studio for winning Oscars last night was Netflix, which shows you that times have really changed. And the money to make movies isn't with the studios. The money is with Netflix. Yeah. They spend 
two, three billion dollars a year on product. But look at their audience. It's billions. Yeah, right. Yeah. They have, um, what is their current million, 120 million people worldwide? Subscribers? Or maybe it's 200 million. I think it's 200 million. 200 million worldwide. Yeah. Disney, Disney is up to 100 million. Disney Plus. And HBO, I mean, HBO Max. It's getting there. It's getting there. Sure. And uh, they've, they've got this deep library of stuff because of all the things they own same with disney. disney go to the disney channel they've got disney movies they've got pixar movies they've got marvel movies you know they've got all the star wars movies i mean that's a, that's a very deep uh bench for yeah you. well and then that's how they started the service with with those ones there that was the low-hanging fruit then they just released that star package that includes all the Touchstone movies and all the Miramax movies and all the other studios that Disney owned along the way as well. So oh, really? I haven't checked that out. Incredible. Where's that on that on Disney Plus? For up here in Canada, it's a section in the Disney app called uh, Star. And that's where they've started adding all those movies. I don't, isn't it really? that on there too? No, they haven't done it here. I think I, moved, I think I moved to Canada. <laughs> Alex, 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 do we have Disney? We have Disney, don't we? Well, yeah, we have Disney, Disney Plus. Yeah, I have the Disney, Disney Plus. Plus trifecta: I have Disney Plus, Hulu, and, and, ESPN. and, and ESPN. ESPN. Plus. And the only reason I got the package was because you like HP, ESPN Plus for uh, tennis. So. Yeah, but it's not a bad deal. It's like it's like. It's, 17 18 bucks a month for all three so you know hulu will, and hulu without commercials i'm sorry because if i ever watch another tv show with commercials it won't be too soon you know? <laughs> i'm spoiled i'm spoiled I, I i gotta be honest i for for a long time i was uh, taking my tv shows off of uh, torrents on on the internet and the reason i was doing that was because my my cable company where I would normally get the shows was doing a bad job of trying to fix my cable at one point. And um, I just got used to the shows without commercials in them because everybody puts up torrents, cuts out the commercials. Mm -hmm. And so when it was now available, Hulu without commercials, I took it in a second, you know, because I'm spoiled. I don't want to watch commercials, but uh, uh, you, did you see many of the films this year, Rick? I guess not. Right. No, I saw um, the one the fellow won for best supporting actor. I'm trying to remember what that was from last night. That movie, the Black Panther movie. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. He, he was very good. Didn't you think? Oh yeah, he was very good. Yeah, in fact, you turned me on to the picture. I I hadn't been watching it. And you said, "Did you watch the uh, you know the uh, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah?" Judas and the Black Messiah. And I said, no, and you said you should watch it. So we watched it and we agreed. It's a great little film. Also, yeah. One Night Miami, which I thought was great. Yeah. I got nothing. Yeah, but all these things were available on cable. All yeah. of them. I mean, if you subscribe to these various things. And yeah, so the, sound, the Sound of Metal was Amazon, right? I think. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, can't, I started to watch that film and I just couldn't get into it. Is it any good, Steve? It, uh, the, sound right. the sound design is the best thing about it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it really makes you kind of hear, you know, or not hear, you know, you experience what he's experiencing. It's interesting, but no, it's not a great. About a drummer who loses yeah. his hearing, right? Right. Mm -hmm. He's he's very good. He's very good in it. Yeah. 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 Both loses his hearing and goes to rehab. Yeah. Oh, that's a double. That's a trifecta, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I probably had he had a bad head. Johnny Bull is. It's, it's, oh, who's calling? <laughs> it's a call-in show now. This is great. Yeah. Hey, remember, remember when your wrist didn't ring? Uh, <laughs> yes. It's Nick Tracy on the phone for you. <laughs> Nick something. I thought it was. I thought it was his car calling him. I thought it was the Night Rider mission that was about to start. Yeah. You didn't watch it last night, did you, Charlie? No. Yeah. Uh, anybody who watched the Oscars? Anybody here? Yeah. Um, Just Mike and myself. Yeah, and and probably Rick watched the replay, right? No, I 
watch because my rock god was nominated for his second Oscar, and I'm a I'm a I'm such a huge Trent Reznor fan, and he won his second Oscar last night. Oh, really? What, what did he win the first one for? Uh, the Social Network. Okay, he, 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 he was in case you don't know who Trent Reznor was he a member of Nine Inch Nails. Nine Inch yep. Nails, yep. He is Nine Inch Nails, yeah. Yeah. I tell you, Mike, I knew Trent Reznor before he was in bands that he'll admit he was in. Cleveland, mm -hmm. Rock. in Cleveland. If if you ever you ever have fun and you want to see Trent Reznor, not look Trent Reznor, go on Spotify and look up the band Slam Bamboo. But I have he was, all of that footage. I've got also, all. Did you see who else won an Oscar for that last night? Stephen What's that? Colbert's musical guy. Yeah, mm. he collaborated with Trent yeah. on on Soul. And then he got up and gave the acceptance speech, didn't mention either of the other two guys, and then walked off. I know. <laughs> Trent got the, Trent and Atticus got the Golden Globe speech, so I guess they gave that, and this is John's first Oscar, so I think they intentionally let him uh, yeah, have but the at least the two guys are standing in back of you, don't you say, don't you acknowledge them as being the people who wrote with you? But, you know. But I hated to see him win because anybody who has anything to do with the Colbert show, I just, you know, <laughs> I have enmity for. Um, but uh, uh, what else? What else is happening? Uh, oh, the CDC. Sure. What did the CDC say today? We can go outside without masks now. We can go to Europe if you showed that you had the shot. No, 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 no. But there was something about masks. <laughs> I don't think it's on you. It's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, Biden is going to talk about that tomorrow. Hey, Alex. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Kimmel is going to have the My Pillow guy on on Thursday. <laughs> and the interview is supposed to happen with the two of them laying in a bed surrounded by pillows. Kimmel was kidding. The only way I'll have him on the show is this way. And Lindell said, "Okay, I'll come on the show. Oh, We're going to lay on a bed and, and interview." Oh God! In bed. I I I'm just waiting for a newspaper clipping in a bizarre yet tragic accident. He was <laughs> by his own pillow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, guys a, a, a Lauren announced Elon Musk will be hosting SNL. Yep. Oh. Yep. <laughs> no, you, you, uh, that's not true, is it? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. May, yes. May yes. yeah, seven. Yes. Yes. Musk is hosting SNL. Yes. Next show yeah. when they're back live. He's Elon be, Musk and Miley Cyrus. Oh, he's the guy I think of when I think of comedy sketches. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I hope he drops acid prior to his monologue. Oh, jeez almighty. I can't wait. Are they running out of human beings for Saturday Night Live? <laughs> mm -hmm. so who hasn't hosted yet? Well, I, Alex I have it. living up there. Yeah. <laughs> Alex. Jeff Bezos. Yes, uh, Andrew. I, I haven't hosted yet, no. Yeah, you haven't hosted yet? No. Oh, no. Sorry. Just get a hold of Lauren Michaels and he'll probably say fine. You know, give him a call. Yeah. Well, Lauren's going to get on the first rocket to Mars now. By Lauren on did show. tell, I got to say something about Lauren. He did tell a good joke when they did cars, comedians and cars getting coffee with uh, Jerry Seinfeld. He told this story about a guy comes to this country because he's heard that America's streets are lined with gold. And he got here and found out not only were they not. Uh, paved with gold, but that it didn't. We didn't have any pavement. <laughs> <laughs> and third, he was going to get a job paving. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the American dream: mm -hmm. paving the streets that are supposedly supposed to be paved with gold. Oh boy, yeah. It's. Um, uh, I took uh, some walks this week and. Marjorie did some went to back to her you back to your gym again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. How is it? Good. It's been 15 months. Since you've been there. All right. Yeah. And and uh, uh and the, like a class that would normally hold 30 was 10. Mm -hmm. And they did a whole filtration system in the place. And when you finish a class. Or even if you leave a, a piece of machine, you have to wipe it down. But classes, they come in and just blow it clean. Really? Yeah. Because, I mean, I've always done that in a gym. I take a towel, mm -hmm. and I wipe everything I've down. I've seen that. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's considered Common gym group. etiquette for those yeah. who've never been to a gym. or done Well, especially after COVID, especially. Yeah. 
Yeah. They take your temperature when you walk in. You have to sign this thing. We had to sign a thing when we had dinner the other night. We had to really? sign wow. our address and everything. Because if they yeah. do, if somebody has it and they have to track, yeah. they have all the information. They do what they do, uh, what do you call it, tracing? Uh, yeah, go, contact yeah. tracing. Contact tracing. They go to the restaurant and they say, yeah, they were here on such and such a day, you know. That thing that we have for New York State, they're beginning to do it in other states. And it's a um, it's an online showing that you've had your, well, here your prescriptions is. and your first and second shots. This With is the white cards they're selling on eBay. See, we were talking about that the other night. And plus, Alex, remember we're all gonna be you yeah. with your little what is it? Your little what's that thing? Q P or Here's the um, the card. Uh, check and when you touch it twice, same password. You tap it here. You tap it here. You've got a, um, a code with a scanner at the top and uh, yeah, all the information. It. But what this does, in order for you to get this, it has to go through the state and their record that you've gotten the shot. So that card, which could be easily doctored, mm, played with. This thing it is already because on top of this, yeah. when you show this to somebody, you have to also show them a proof of identification. So it's right. double check, and uh, it's it's foolproof. I think. I think um, it's great. Can't they just scan the chip? That, can't they yes. just scan the chip that got with your vaccine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which one? Like we do for dogs when they're lost. Very good, Andrew. Very good. You know what I haven't gotten this year? I guess because of the mask. Have you gotten a cold this year, Marjorie? No, because of the mask. Have you gotten or cold? we yeah. haven't really felt the pollen as much. Yeah. You know, you know I sneeze from the pollen, but that's different. Um, um, Steve Bender, have you gotten a cold this year? I have not. You know, it's. I think it's because we're all wearing the mask, which of might course. not be a bad idea from here yeah. on. You know? Well, in China, they do. In Hong Kong, they do. They only do, they only do if they have a cold. No, that's mm. not true. Then a lot of people walking around with masks have colds. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's yeah. if you're sick. I think it's just all the time. Yeah, in so China, many, well, well, Marjorie's well, right. In well, China and Taiwan, they wear the mask for pollution, too. All, yeah. all the time, yes. Yeah, but we, we, when we were in, uh, in uh, 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 China, um, Beijing. Uh, I didn't see anybody wearing masks. A lot of people were wearing masks. Alex. Were they? I don't yeah. remember them. When I'm in Shanghai, I wear. When one. you were uh, on the street, you're mask blind, Alex. The other day. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Like, when when you were uh, walking around yeah. outside yeah. yesterday or the day before, was there a lot of masks or not? Yes. 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 Yeah, uh, I was although in, in, in my neighborhood, there seems to be a resistance among, say, shall we say, our black citizens here in Harlem. No, just them. younger people. But then again, yeah. since there are so many black people in Harlem, I pay more attention to people who aren't wearing masks and people who are wearing masks, but a lot of blacks are wearing masks too, you know. Um, Down where I work, everyone is wearing masks. All these okay. yuppies. Yeah, they're all yuppies. masks. Yep. When I go midtown, very rarely see somebody unmasked. That's right. But here, quite a few, quite a lot. Not really, Alex. It's mostly <laughs> younger people that don't do it, but people middle middle age absolutely wear the mask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I hear Marjorie say yuppies? Yuppies. <laughs> Is that an old word? Uh, it's been a while since I've heard it. I was delighted. <laughs> it's been a while since I've used it. Our favorite <laughs> ads, our favorite ads on TV, are the ones about uh, here's how not to be your parents. Oh, those are the best, oh, Rick. Oh, so great. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Uh, the yeah. waiter does not need to know your name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this: as a child growing up in the '80s, yeah. I would watch Miami Vice or I'd watch Thirty Something with my parents or whatever. And I was like, God damn, I want to be a yuppie so bad. I didn't know what it was. I was just, they, they all just looked like they were having such a fun time. Really? <laughs> I'm past the yuppies, actually. I was making fun of yuppies. Yeah, remember in San Francisco, you know you're old Chestnut when, Street, hey, they listen, were taking you, over. You know you're old when you're making, when you were making fun of beatniks. Okay. <laughs> 
I mean, every every generation has this thing, you know. And the beatniks were followed by the uh, hippies, mm-hmm. which were followed by yippies. No, well, yippies was a political thing. The next thing that came, I think, were millennials. Was it? What, no, what no, 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 no. You had Dinks too. Huh? You got Gen X and Gen Xers. Gen Xers, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and uh, so, I mean, you go through all of these. Generation X. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Generation X. Yeah. When my parents were young, what was it? It was it was a, it was before Beatniks. There were. It was called Get Out of Europe. What kind of the lost generation? They call it. riffraff, hobos. <laughs> no, oh, when hobos. I was working at the school, the kids go, Miss Kathy, did you have homeless people when you were kids? And I said, No, we had hobos. Yeah, yeah. hobos. Remember? Yeah, hobos. Yeah, hobos. Are, we loved hobos. They were in movies a lot. You know? Totally. Yeah, my favorite. My favorite movie is about hobos, which is Sullivan's Travels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Those are hobos. Hobos. They don't use that term anymore, do they? The kids did for a short period of time. They kept calling people hobos. My youngest daughter did. And then it went away. You know, you, my mother, you know, my mother then goes back to 1906. Okay. Or 19, 1904, actually. And uh, she, um, uh, 1904, and she... Uh, <laughs> She had her own words to use, and she came to New York once and saw that I was dating a lot of women, and she said, "You know, you've become a roué." Huh? <laughs> I never heard of that one. Never heard of that one. I never no. heard of that one either. Yeah. Till my mother called me a roué. Uh, sounds that, very French. That's a little French. That, that's exactly that what I was, was a term they used for right. guys who fooled around a lot back in the twenties or something like that. But Nowadays, you'd ask, be a- Jackie, he probably knows when that term was in use. In the 20s, like Adolphe Manjou in film was a rule way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they were paying for it, did they call them Gateses? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh, what about gigolos? When's the last time you heard that, that word? Oh, right. Oh. 70s. Um, Louis Prima. <laughs> Louis <laughs> Prima. Gig- Gigolo is associated with David Lee Roth for me. Yeah, right. just a gigolo everywhere I go. Yeah, well, how far back? Dan Aykroyd. That's the song from the thirties. Louis gigolo. Prima sang it. By the way, I've come up with a new band I I love, and I don't know if you've heard of it, Shecky, and I don't know. I don't think anybody else here has heard of them. The uh, they're out of San Francisco, and it's the uh, Royal. Uh, oh, what was the name? Royal of? Blood. No, hold on oh. a second. I I'm sure I have it somewhere. Do I? Uh, the Royal, oh God, I just forgot them. Wait a minute, let me let me go to, to uh, iTunes here. I probably have it. Yeah. Uh, the Jeopardy Royal music. Society Jazz Orchestra. Anybody heard of it? Chef, no. Go on to iTunes and just listen to the snippets of the Royal um, Society Jazz Orchestra. They're doing great recreations of like 20s mu- music and 30s music. And it's really very well done. So I just would pass that along to you. I, I found them on YouTube last night. Uh, they were doing uh, uh, Happy Feet. Uh, and it's a whole orchestra doing it very authentically. So anyway, I love them. They're Don Neely's Royal Society Jazz Orchestra. The Are they anything like Royal Crown Review and Squirrel Nut Zippers? But no, the, the, the further back than that. Wow. No, further back than that, like Paul Whiteman. Mm-hmm. Well, it's and like Vince Pink. Giordano and the Nighthawks. Big, big bad movie yeah, daddy. Right. Who? who yeah. And the big. Nighthawks is, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Vince what? Giordano. Mm-hmm. What, 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 were you, what were you saying, uh, Andrew? The big bad voodoo daddy. Big bad voodoo daddy? Uh-huh. That's another one. They're great. Well, I just I just picked up on this band and I went and they're out of San Francisco. They formed in 1983, and I'm going. I never Jeez. heard of them. Where were they? What? That's yeah. the kind of music I would have had on my show. Exactly. You know, and I went. Where, where did they come from? San Francisco, 1983, and I never heard of them. I never knew one musician who played with them. You know, 
It's very weird. Very weird. They've been around. Yep. Long time. Yeah. They've been around quite a while there and they're in trouble now because they're not getting any business. You know, they haven't been able to play a gig for a year now. So they're ask, asking fans to contribute to help them eat food and things like that that are important. Mm. Or um, starving artists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and uh, let's check it with Trucker Steve. Trucker Steve. Where are you right now? Michigan. Where? Michigan. Where in Michigan? Any place in particular? Battle Creek. Battle Creek, Michigan. Okay, Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Give us a honk. Come on, give us a honk. <laughs> <laughs> You just made Mike's ear. <laughs> how, many, how many people? I'm gonna was, again. How many people jumped off the road when they <laughs> the seven car pile up in Battle Creek? Yeah, it was, was, it. It was Steve, 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 when people get in your truck, maybe, and you're giving them a ride or something, is that one of the things they want to do? Is pull that horn? Give people a ride. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. Okay, that, that's why you've got the dog. That's why you got your dog with you, right? Dogs allowed. Yeah. I got my dog. He doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. You don't have one of those mud flaps, ass gas or grass, no one rides for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, so what else has been happening? Uh, anybody? Well, Bruce. Jenner's running for governor. Oh, Bruce. Oh, that's yeah. Caitlin. Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> you know something? He has not had his lower extremities cut off yet. He's Bruce. Yeah. Bruce, Bruce Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a really ugly looking woman. I don't want to add that. You know. Not that bad. Huh? You don't not think it's that, that bad? Not bad. For, you know, what is he about? 70 or she she about 70 yeah yeah you know for a seven year old okay how would woman how, how would how would she be careful how would she look if she had done this 20 years ago do you think she'd look okay you think she'd be convincing no you know because i've seen some very convincing um you know uh, trans people that way lately. Uh, who did I see recently? I went, boy, that's really good. They, in fact, there's well, the girl on Supergirl. I was going to just mention that there is a girl on Supergirl who's a guy, I guess. But you would never know it. But she plays a transgender superhero. And there's, you would no. never know it. She really is very, very convincing. There's one on Big Sky also. Really? Yes. yes. Yeah, and she was in another show on uh, AMC, some weird show that was on like a series about, about a year ago. Well, also, there's that woman who was on uh, Orange is the New Black. Yep. Who was somewhat convincing, not 100%, but, you know. But I don't know if the job is to be convincing. Is it? Am I? Am I, I don't know if it is a job. Huh? I don't think it's a job. It's just a desire. To, yeah, but I mean, do you have to be convincing, or are you just are you just wearing the makeup, the dress, the long hair, so on and so forth, and hoping for the best, and just feeling comfortable in what you're wearing? I think that it's about feeling the best. Yeah, but it, does, it doesn't matter whether you're convincing or not. No, I often talked about uh, the women I knew who were trans uh, back what in the uh, in the seventies. Um, and I knew Holly Woodlawn, all the, all the women that were in, uh, in Walk on the Wild Side, Holly Woodlawn, um, oh God, my mind's by Jackie Curtis, and I'm trying to remember the name of the other one. And they were all different types. One was very much convincing as a woman. One of them used to wear five-day stubble, you know, <laughs> her dress, Jackie Curtis. And Holly Woodlawn was just doing a clowny version of women. It's almost as though I, I often question whether he hated women because he was doing women in a way that was so kind of clownish, you know. So, uh, you know, there are different types. And, uh, but, 
what the problem is, and Len's the only guy on today, that and and uh, and Kathleen who are in California right now. Mm-hmm. But it's really this whole thing with the recall method is just disgusting. It's it's a it's a replay of, of the Schwarzenegger debacle. I mean, yeah. <laughs> It's exactly the same that we've got a you know Democratic governor. We're gonna we're gonna get him out. We're gonna you know bring in some somebody with name recognition, I guess. Well, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't get it because what is this? Is this buyer's remorse? Is that what this is all about? Uh, no, it's about everybody being pissed off about you know uh, Newsom's rules about masking and and things. Yet he's out you know at the French Laundry having a having dinner and a cocktail, and we're all sitting at home, you know, we can't go out because of the mandate. So they're mad at him about that. Yeah, but that's not enough. Is that why they're doing it? Because of that? Yeah. That's that's one of the things. Yeah. They got a bunch of pissy, pooey people in California, I'm telling you. No, they started. They started Mm -hmm. uh, doing the recall the day after he got elected. So, it, you know, and, and the theory is here that it's really a Republican move. It's not so much they want a Republican governor, but they want a Republican governor because a Republican governor uh, could then do something about uh, the, uh, the senator. from yeah, for, as, for as blue as a state this is, the fact that we voted, you know, uh, Schwarzenegger in was, was remarkable. Well, no, but really? here's how Schwarzenegger got voted in. What you do is you hold a recall vote. What you're doing is you're voting a recall and on that same ballot is your choice for who should be governor if mm-hmm. you don't want the recall. That's right. If you want the recall, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. So all in one. And then on top of that, um, you then uh, have to, uh, uh, they then count up all the votes and the person who got the most votes wins. Mm-hmm. Now Schwarzenegger did not get a majority. There were like 35 other people nominated. Sure. All he, was had, to do, star. All he had to do was yeah. get one percent, a two percent, and everybody else got one percent, and he was going to be governor. Right. So it, it, it's it, all name recognition. It's all exactly. Name. Yeah. So when is when is the inauguration of Polly Shore coming up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, um, so I mean, Schwarzenegger won because he was the most well-known name. He wasn't. Yep. Terrible governor. He just wasn't no. a good governor. No. He, he, um, um, I think he, you know, he, but he, I, what do you, he lasted one term, right? Yeah. Uh, well, he finished out Great Avis's term and then he got voted in again, right? Yeah. Yeah. He looked like five years. I don't know. The fact that he got voted in again was amazing. Mm. You know, because everybody would say, well, you know, I didn't want him. Well, I didn't want him either. Who wanted him? Well, 10 people out in the mm. uh, <laughs> Canyon wanted him and uh he that's how he got to be governor but he got reelected. yeah so you know but this whole idea of the recall it's ridiculous it should it, uh, sure you could should be able to recall a governor if you you know shoot somebody in cold blood you know or you find him stealing great amounts of money but because he ate at the french laundry when he told everybody they shouldn't that's not a reason you know it's not a good reason and uh it's kind of sad. It's kind of mm-hmm. sad. I hear. I don't. Uh, but uh, you, you live in California, Len. Good luck to you. And and of course, Kathleen. Not for much longer. I think uh, it's not going to be all that much longer. Okay. You know, I'm getting I'm getting tired of it. We're getting close to retirement age, and it's. Uh, don't tell me you're moving to Florida. No, I'm moving in with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fine. You know. Uh, hey. Um. I think we'll have all the fans working. Yeah. You know, all I have to do is find a remote control. A brand new one, 135 bucks if I wanted to buy it. Brand new. I bought it all. You'll always have fans in us, Alex. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> hey, this has been really great. I, mean, I enjoy the show. It's just, you know, we just talk. That's it. You know, we just have a nice time. It's pleasant, airy. <laughs> you know, a lot of people here I only see once a week. Uh, and uh, it's my one event where I can actually see Shecky uh, 
because that doesn't happen very often. And have, you haven't been out there in what, a year? I haven't been out there in a year, over a year. Last week, you guys were talking about making it happen. When's it going to happen? Uh, as, as, as soon as Shecky feels he's okay for me to come out. <laughs> well, what do I care? You want to get on the train? Come on over. I might do it, but he has to get on the train first. That's the issue. Then where do we go for lunch? Yeah. Well, um, the barbecue place apparently has indoor seating now. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. The way I understand it, you have to order at the takeout counter and then sit down and they bring it to you. Okay. Well, that's fine. You know, that's one way. And uh, are there a lot of other places we could? Well, there's Ben's Deli, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, hey, listen. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to Jeff. You haven't really said anything, Jeff. Well, I'm not a theaters guy, so or <laughs> so you know, I didn't see any of these. Yeah, things, so not, I really had nothing to contribute. You weren't missing either. anything. But yeah, and we would have gotten you into the conversation, but artificial heart valves didn't come up. No, it didn't. <laughs> I got a good one right here. It's still working. <laughs> was that one of the ones you worked on? No. 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 Actually, this is a California job. You, 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 it's like you're saying, I wouldn't have anything to do with one of the ones I created. <laughs> no, I've done a lot of them. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you. Thank you, Rick Sheckman. Uh, Steve Bender, always a pleasure. Once uh, Soon we should get together now that the town is opening up you know absolutely let's do it we'll meet somewhere halfway and have lunch or something yeah okay we gotta see you guys you know uh edward Berger, thank you so much for being with us tonight today it, 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 he only waves he doesn't even oh sorry sorry <laughs> <laughs> charlie wallace thank you andrew deutsch thank you lynn lafrisco always wonderful to have you here Scott Boddicker out in, uh, out in Plano. Good to have you here. Marjorie Miller, who's about uh, two steps away from me or something like that. Uh, she's in the bedroom, lying there in the bed. That's our, that's our love nest. Um, with all the pictures she had done up by a cartoonist up on the walls there. And of course, to Bob Q. Kazoo, better known as Schmoody, better known as Kathleen. Thank you for being here. And Steve. Trucker Steve in Michigan. Thank you. Everybody wave goodbye. I'll wave goodbye at you and say thank you. And everybody, thank you for joining us. Bye.